whenever God hands Israel over to their enemies, God never allows this without raising up an army, a faithful remnant to fight against it. And this is exactly what God does here during the time of Gideon. He raises up a faithful army. And this army, this Gideon's army, teaches us about what the army in the last days is going to look like. God does not want large armies. He wants small armies that are based on quality, not quantity. And of course, that army will go through the same testing, the same process of elim elimination. Again, special forces training, 80% drop out on the first day because they can't hack it. They haven't got what it takes. There's many who want to be part of that army. There's many who want to come and preach the gospel. I want to go out and preach the gospel. I want to take on the forces of evil. I want to serve the Lord. They all come enthusiastically, didn't they? Give it a few weeks. Start talking about sin and repentance. You don't see them again. Why? Because God's got rid of them. God's getting rid of the liabilities. God gets rid of the passengers. There is no room for passengers in God's army. There is no room for flight risks in God's army. There is no room for those who are going to flee. Because on the front line, if you flee, just like I said in Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 8, you're leaving your brothers exposed, aren't you? That's why, if you're afraid, go home. There's no room for you here. Who are those who can't hack a Bible-believing church? Those who can't endure sound biblical teaching. 2 Timothy 4, verse 3. For the time will come where people will not endure sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires... They will gather around them teachers to say whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will turn ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. A lot of these people will always come and seem sincere. They seem enthusiastic. But then you start getting biblical and they're gone in a few weeks. John 6 verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. There were more disciples with Jesus. But they left and turned back. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. He was left with just the 12. All the other ones who couldn't hack the teaching, they couldn't endure the teaching, they left. They bailed. And Jesus was left with just the 12. How many times have we seen it in this congregation, brothers and sisters? How many people has God got rid of who couldn't hack it, who didn't have what it takes? Just like the churches today, they call themselves armies, but they're not prepared to take on the forces of darkness, are they? That's all churches are doing now. They're not churches, they're not armies, they're social clubs with crosses on their roofs, aren't they? But we're more than just a social club with a cross on our table, aren't we? We're an army. What did Jesus say? Watch, stay alert, sober up, watch out for these things. This is what you need to be looking out for. This is what Jesus said in the Olivet Discourse, didn't he? 2 Timothy 2, verse 4. No one entangled in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, but that he may please the one who enlisted him as a soldier. Who is the one who enlisted us as soldiers, brothers and sisters? Who is the one we want to please rather than the affairs of this life? So you get rid of the liabilities first, the ones who are afraid, the ones who can't hack it, the ones who haven't got what it takes. They're the first to go. Then you get rid of the lukewarm prosperity preachers. Then you get rid of those who are blind and asleep and have no idea what's going on. Those who are deceived. Those who are following deceivers. Those who care what others think. Those who care what men think. You get rid of those. Then you get rid of those who refuse to crucify the flesh. Those who want to live as an old creation and a new creation. Get rid of those. Who are you left with once you get rid of all of that? You're left with the faithful remnant. You're left with Gideon's 300. If you're part of the chosen elite, then God has chosen you to fight the good fight of faith and he's chosen you for victory through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.